uh, linear approximations and differentials. First of all, this is the linear approximation, or it's also called the linearization, and also, also, also the linear approximation here. So it's linearization and it's an approximation. Okay, it's the linear approximation is what it is. So this is essentially, this right here is essentially the tangent to the curve, the tangent line to the curve at the point A, F of A. Okay, now, because um, there's one way to write an equation of a line with the point slope form is like this, where um, the slope is M and, this, and it goes to the point X not comma Y not. Um, but here, this is going to the point uh, A, F of A. Or the or the is the is the point. Okay, so this gets replaced with um, f of a, and this gets replaced with a. Okay, and then the slope is the derivative. The slope of the curve at the point is the derivative. Okay, so this gets replaced with f prime of a, and essentially. So you have this right here. And then you just take this guy to the other side of the equation. And there you go. You got there's that's the this is exactly the linearization. Okay, so it's just, it's just the it's just the tangent line. Okay. And then the differential essentially all you do for the differential is take the derivative and um, of the function and then put a dx on the end. So you write your dy equals the derivative times dx. And this is also related to, to this kind of thing. And we'll, um, I'll, I'll show some examples of how that's related. Okay, so let's look for number one. So we're finding the differential of, there's a linearization of the function f of x equals sine x at a equals pi over Okay, so a is pi over six. F of a is, of course, f of pi over six, which is sine of pi over six. Let me draw a little uh, triangle here. Um, so if this is pi over six, then this is a one, two, root three triangle, right? So the sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's one over two, one half. Okay, sine of pi over six is one half. And that's f of a. And then we need the derivative. Okay, so f prime of x. Just take the derivative of this. That's cosine x. F prime of pi over six, or f prime of a, is cosine of pi over six. We have to have the triangle here. It's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's root three over two. Okay. So essentially, um, so essentially, you just take everything that we just calculated here. And um, and plug it in. So f of a was one half. Okay, so that's your f of a. F prime of a is root three over two. And then a is pi over six. So just put, plug that in right there. And so that's the, this is the linearization. It's the tangent line to the curve as well, but it's written in this form right here. Um, because normally with a line, you would distribute this and then combine these two terms somehow. 
Okay. So um, this is what the linearization is used for. It's used for approximations when you're very close to the value. Okay. So let me illustrate that with this exercise number two. So find the linear approximation of the function of this function at a equals zero. Okay. So we need to calculate g of zero, which is if you go to zero in here for x, okay, it's going to be it's just gonna be the fifth root of one, which is one. Okay, and um now we, then we need to find g prime of zero, because remember the linearization. In this case, is going to be g of zero plus g prime of zero times x minus zero. Okay, that's what the linearization is going to be. G of x is I can I'm going to rewrite this as one plus x to the one fifth. Okay, so the fifth root is express can be written this way. So if it's the fifth root, you write it that way. Okay, then that makes it easier, of course, to take the derivative. Bring the one fifth down. This remains the same. This is reduced by one. One fifth minus one is negative four fifths. Okay, and now we can calculate this one by plugging in a zero here. All that's going to be one. So that's and that's so going to end up being one fifth. Okay, so the linearization will be g of zero which is one plus g prime of zero, which is one fifth times x minus zero, so it's just x. Okay, so one plus one fifth x. Um, you don't need the parentheses there. Okay, so in this context, the way that it's being used, is as a simple approximation. Okay, so they want us to find the fifth root of the fifth root of, of 0 0.95. Okay, so what you think what you have to do is, is think of this. Okay, what number when I put it in for G What number here? Maybe I'll call that number C. What number C, when I put it in here, is going to make g of x be that? Okay, so remember g of x is um, the fifth root of 1 plus x. But if there's a C, then I have to C. Okay, so what value of C will make it so that this is that? Okay, and then you can see that one plus C has got to be 0 0.95, right? So that means C is negative 0 0.05. Okay, so this value of C will make this work. Or I could say, maybe I should have used X, okay? Yeah, it would have been easier if I had just used X. Well, I wish I could go back and do that. I'm gonna go back and change all these to X's. x equals negative 0 0.05 works. So what I do for this one, I calculate L of negative 0 0.05. So that's one plus one fifth times negative 0 0.05. And that is one minus uh, 0 0.01 or 0.99. So the first one is approximation is 0.99. Okay, now if you if you actually take the fifth root of 0.95 on a calculator, you're going to get something different than this. Okay, this is just an approximation using the linearization. Okay, now the second part it's 1.1, right? Okay, so the fifth root of one plus x is equal to the fifth root of 1.1. 1 
And so you can see that 1 plus x is 1.1. That means x has to be 0.1. Okay. So for this one, we use the linearization with um, with a 0.1. Okay. So you plug a 0.1 in here. That's 1 plus 0.1 divided by 5, which is 1 plus 0.02 which is 1.02, okay, so 1.02. Now again, if you put, if you put, if you take the fifth root of 1.1, then you'll get something different, but it'll be close. Okay, now the second part, we need to represent this historic occasion with the graph. Okay, so which graph shall we choose? Um, when, so the graph has to have, it's gonna have to contain this line right here. So the intercept is one, y intercept is one, and the slope is one fifth, okay? And the graph will intersect g of x at, along the, at the y-axis, at its y-intercept, okay? So that means it's gotta be this one here, okay? Because the y-intercept is, the y -intercept is one, and none of these other ones has the y-intercept being one, only this one does, okay? Because this one can be thought of as y equals one-fifth x, plus one, so the y-intercept is one, plus um, you're intersecting the graph at zero when x is zero, okay? So what's happening here is the actual fifth root of 0.95 is the value on the black curve at 0.95, okay? This value that we have here, this 0.99, is the value on the blue line at when you're at 0.95 here. Okay, and same thing with this. This value is what's on the black curve. This value, the 1.02, is on the line. And see, when you're really close to zero, they're close together. Okay, but if you were to try to use the linearization to to, talk, to estimate um, that using a negative one or something, then you'd be way off. In fact, you know, in this case, it probably not even be defined. No, no, I'm sorry, it will be defined. Okay, but you're going to be way off because the value is going to be down here. The actual value is going to be down here. Your estimate is going to be up here. Okay, whereas here, you're, they're clearly close together. Okay. Um, number three, find the differential of each function. And okay, so what I said from the beginning, to find the differential, you just take the derivative and you tack a dx on the end. Okay, so or it's sort of like this, okay? So you've got dy dx equals, okay, so the, wait a minute. I can't, I'm gonna, let me rewrite this so that we have, so here, this is kind of tricksy um, because this square root covers the t also, by the way. So I'm gonna write it as root seven times t to the one half. I'm just gonna rewrite it like that. Because that'll help me take the derivative, apply the chain rule. Okay, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared and I'll put it like that. Okay, so the derivative of the outer function applied at the inner function. So this stays the same here. You take the derivative of that, secant squared. But then you're going to multiply by the derivative of this part here, 
with the inside part, which is you pull the one half down, you still have the root seven, and then it's two to the, and you subtract one from here, so that's negative one half. Okay, so dy dx. Okay, so so here for the hold on, let me do this. Let me go ahead and finish this off. Okay, so for the differential, um, this is not really a fraction, but you treat it as if this was a fraction, and then the, and then you send this dx to the side of the equation. Oh wait, I'm sorry. This should be a d dt because the variable's t. So that should be a dt. So you create this as a fraction, even though it's not, and you take it to the other side of the equation. But in the meantime, let me let me resolve this. This is going to be root seven over two root t. That's what all that's going to be. And then we have this. Make sure the square root sign covers the t also and dt. Okay, so let's just take the derivative and slap a dt or a dx or whatever the variable, whatever the independent variable is on the end. Okay, let's do number part b. Here the independent variable is a, is a v. Okay, so Let's go ahead and work through that and we'll do it really carefully. So it's low d high. There's low. D high, okay, so the derivative of the numerator is, is negative 2v. So make sure you put the negative there. Okay, and then it's minus low, no, minus high. d low. So the derivative of the denominator is positive 2v. Okay, all over the square of what's below. So we got that. Okay. Okay, distribute that in. That's negative 10v minus 2v cubed. Okay, then we have a minus um, 10v. And we have a minus and a minus. That's plus uh, 2v cubed. And these guys are going to cancel each other out. Okay. So now this dv right here, we take that to the other side of the equation. Combine these. Uh, ne these negative 10 V's into negative 20 V. Ends up like that, and you have a DV right there. Okay, so that's, how, that's taking the differential. And the differential is related to the linearization. Okay, so number four. Because the differential is the, is the change or the slope. Okay, so here in number four, we're gonna calculate, okay, this is the actual change in y. Okay, and this, of course, this is the actual change in x. Although, this is this is all even if you said dx you would assume that that's the actual change in x as well. Okay. 
So, yeah. Okay, so for number four, um, so you have y equals e to the x, and you're starting at, at zero, and you're going to 0.6. Okay, so the change in y is going to be, it, it's f of b minus f of a is what it is. Okay, so in this case, it's, um, or, or I could, I guess I should, okay, because we have this delta x, let me do this. Sorry about that. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, so it's um, A plus, all right, let me do this, X plus delta X minus F of X. And that's what it is. That's the change in, in Y. Okay. So in this case, X is zero. So, and delta x is 0 0.6. So this would be 0 plus 0 0.6, and that would be f of 0. Okay, but your function is e to the x. Okay, so that's going to be e to the 0 0.6 minus e to the 0. Let's see, e to the 0 0.6 is um one point eight approximately one point eight two two e to the zero is e to the zero is one okay so this is gonna be point eight two two so that will go there point eight two two Okay, so now we're, we're also going to use the differential to estimate that. Okay, so for, so using the, using the differential, I'll do that in green. With the differential, that means you take the derivative of that and you put a dx on the end. Okay, and so, and then you're going to plug in, you're going to plug in, um, let me give myself a little bit more space. You're going to plug in the following. Zero for X, right here, and then for the dx, you're going to plug in the change in x right there. So the dx gets replaced with a 0 0.6. The x gets replaced with a 0. Okay. So this is going to replace your dx. This is going to re this is going to replace your x. Of course, e to the zero is one. So your answer is 0 0.6, and that's what goes here. Okay, now for the third part, which is sketch a diagram showing the line settings with, with uh, length dx, dy, and delta x. Okay. Um, so all of these are the same, pretty much the blue is e to the x and the red is the linearization. Okay, so the red line is the linearization in all four graphs. The blue curve represents e to the x in all four graphs. Okay. Now, um, this right here, this is the correct graph right here. Your dx is the change in x. Okay. And that's represents going from zero to 
0 0.6. This is your change in x. The dy will be the curve, along, how far will, will be the, the change from from this this point up to this point on the on the on the on the linearization. And that'll give you the dy. The actual change will be on the actual curve because we're talking about y equals e to the x, which is the actual curve. So that will be your delta y. Your your delta y. And that's the actual change. Okay. These other things don't make any. This doesn't make sense because it's putting. Actually, this is putting a y on the um, x-axis. Putting delta y on the x on the x direction. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. These don't make any sense either of them. This is the only one that makes sense in this diagram. That doesn't make sense. This is the only one that is the correct one. Because it's delta y right there. Everything else um, doesn't work. Okay. So it's going to be this one. Okay, let's get, let's go to number five, and we're supposed to use a linear approximation to estimate this number, the cube root of two hundred and seventeen. Okay, now um, I started taking numbers. And I took six cubed is two hundred and sixteen. Okay, so that means that the cube root of two hundred and sixteen is equal to six. Okay, so there's two routes you can go. You can either let f of x be, just let it be the cube root of x. That's perfectly fine. Um, that's perfectly fine to do that. But th it'll go a little bit different than what we're actually going to do. But what we're actually going to do is I'm going to let, I'm going to take the cube root of 216 plus x. Okay. So, um, and then x when, then I'm going to say say I, a equal to um, zero and do the linearization that way. Okay, so if I was doing this one, then I would set a equal to 216 and do linearization that way. It would be the same thing, okay, pretty much. But I do it this way because when a is zero, I get the cube root to 16, which is going to be six. Okay, so remember the linearization is equal to f of a. No, in case this case g, I changed it to g. So g of a plus g prime of a times x minus a. In this case, a is zero, and here's this. This is the function right here. Okay, so g of x is um, uh, 216 plus x to the one third. Okay, and I can also calculate g of a, which is g of zero, and that's going to be um, the cube root of 216 plus zero, which is going to be six. Okay, that's going to be six. Okay, then. Um, g prime of x, calculate that one, the, the one third is going to come down. And then I subtract one from that, which, which gives me negative two thirds. The derivative of the inside is zero plus one, so it's just one. So that's just going to be that. Okay, g prime of a, which is g prime of zero, is going to be one third. Um, 216 plus zero to the negative two thirds. 
Okay, which is going to be 1 over 3 times 216 to the positive 2 thirds. Okay, so um, let's do the 1 third first, and that gives me 6. So 216 to the 1 third, the cube root of 216 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So that's going to be 1 over 3 times 36. Okay. That's what that's going to be. What is 3 times 36? I guess I should calculate that. No, it doesn't matter. I guess I could, it's 108. I guess I'd put that in there. 1 over 108. Okay, and then this is x minus, and then a is 0, so that's going to be 0. Okay, so that's your linearization. Okay, now, this number here, um, if g of x is the cube root of 216 plus x, then how do I get the cube root of 217? Okay, so that means that two, in order to get that from here, that means that 216 plus x got to be 217, which means x is 1. Okay, so the approximation will be, in other words, the, pro, the, 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 the approximation of the cube root of 217 is the linearization at 1, which is going to be 6 plus, and there's a 1 here, this is 0, this is gone, so that's just 1, plus 1 over 108. Okay, so that's going to be the approximation. And that one is approximately 6.00926. You're supposed to go five decimal places. Okay, so that's what that's going to be. Okay, any questions about that? Any confusion? Okay. Great, let's move on to number six. Okay, so here you have the radius of a circular disk is 28 centimeters with a maximum error and measurement of, of 0 0.2 centimeters. Okay, so 28 centimeters, so it's actually, I don't know the exact measurement of the disk, but it's 28 is what they measured, but there could be some error, so, and they're measuring somehow. So we're going to use differentials to estimate the maximum error in the calculated area of the disk. Okay, so you know that the area is pi r squared. That's your area. Now the differential is going to be, take the derivative here, so that's 2r, or 2 pi r, and then tack a dr on the end. So that's going to be your differential. Okay. Now the radius is supposedly 28 centimeters, but there could be error in that measurement, an error of 0 0.2. Two centimeters. This, you make this your dr, and you make that your r. Now, if there's that much measurement, if there's that much error in the in the measurement of the radius, okay. So plug the 28 in for r here. You plug the 0 0.2 in for dr. Okay, and then um, you run this in the calculator. 
and that gets you approximately 35.19. Okay, so there could be 35.19 could be the approximate error in your in the area. Okay, that's the maximum. That's the approximate maximum error. That's the estimate for the estimate for the maximum error in the area of the disk. Okay. Just but from an error of 0.2 centimeters in the measuring of the radius, it translates to that much error in the in the in the measurement of the area. If you because you're using the radius to find the area, right? Okay. Number part B. Um, what you do for part B, the relative error is going to be your um, the relative error will be the error divided by the area. Okay. So in this case, the error, so I should say maybe, like, let me do this way. Okay, so the relative error, this is going to be the error divided by the area, which the estimate for the area error, error is this DA here that we just calculated, and Area is pi r squared. Okay, so you got this three point, you got this thirty five point one nine, or whatever that is. So I guess I should, I guess, I guess I could just like, um, I could just go back to here and go two pi times twenty eight times zero point two, and then here I could go pi times um, twenty eight squared. I could just do that. And then, um, and then I could get that to cancel with that, and the pi's cancel. Oh, pi's cancel. Uh, and that's going to be approximately zero point one four three. Well, wait, no. Point zero one four three. Let me write that better. 0.0143 is what that's going to be. Okay, and then finally, for the percentage error, um, what that is is uh, convert this to a present convert to a percentage. convert this to a percentage, okay? So they just moved the decimal point over two places, so 1.43% 1 